so what are your thoughts on um, the Turing test and the Lobner Prize, which is the, you know, one of the most famous attempts at the test of human intelligence, uh, sorry, of artificial intelligence mm -hmm. by uh, doing a natural language open dialogue test that's test that's uh, judged by humans mm -hmm. as far as how well the machine did. So I'm, I'm not a fan of the Turing test itself or any of its variants for two reasons. Uh, so first of all, it's, um, it's really copping out uh, of trying to define and measure intelligence because it's entirely outsourcing that to a panel uh, of human judges. And these human judges, uh, they may not themselves have, have any proper methodology. They may not themselves have, have any proper definition of intelligence. They may not be reliable. So the Turing test is already failing uh, one of the core psychometrics principles, which is reliability, because you have uh, biased uh, uh, human judges. Uh, it's also violating the, the standardization requirement uh, and the freedom from bias requirement. <laughs> and so it's really a, a coup out because you are outsourcing everything that matters, which is precisely describing intelligence and finding a standard on test uh, um, to measure it. You're outsourcing everything to uh, to people. So it's really a coup out. And by the way, uh, we should keep in mind that uh, when Turing proposed uh, uh, the imitation game, uh, it was not meaning for the imitation game to be an actual uh, goal for the field of AI, an, an actual test of intelligence. It was using uh, it was using the imitation game as a, a thought experiment in a philosophical discussion in his, in his uh, uh, 1950 paper. He was trying to argue that theoretically it should be possible uh, for something very much like the human mind, indistinguishable from the human mind, to be encoded in a Turing machine. And at the time, that was that was you know um, uh, a very daring idea. It was uh, stretching credulity. But uh, nowadays, I think it's, it's it's fairly well accepted that the the mind is an information processing system, and that you could probably encode it into a computer. So another reason why I'm not a fan of this type of test is that it the incentives that it creates are incentives that are not conducive to proper uh, scientific research. If your goal is to trick, uh, to convince a panel of human judges that they're talking to a human, then uh, you have an incentive to rely on, on tricks and prestidigitation. Um, in the same way that let's say you're doing physics and you want to solve teleportation, and what if the test that you set out uh, to pass is you need to convince a panel of judges that teleportation took place and, and they're just sitting there and, and watching what you're doing. And that is uh, uh, something that you can achieve with, you know, David Copperfield could, could achieve it uh, in, his, in his show at Vegas, right? Mm -hmm. But is, it, and what he's doing is very elaborate, but it's not actually it's not physics. It's not making any progress in our understanding of the universe, right? But to push back on that, it's possible, that's the hope with these kinds of subjective evaluations, is that it's easier to solve it generally than it is to come up with tricks that convince a large number of judges. Well, that's in, the hope. In, in practice, what it turns out is that it's very easy to deceive people in the same way that you know you can, you can do magic in Vegas. You can actually very easily convince people uh, that they're talking to human when they're actually talking to an algorithm. I, 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 I just disagree. I disagree with that. I think it's easy. I, I, I would. I would push. No, it's not easy. It's. Uh, um, it's doable. It's very easy because I wouldn't say it's very easy are, though. We are biased. <laughs> like we have theory of mind. Yeah. We are constantly projecting emotions, intentions. Yes. Uh, 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 agentness. Agentness is one of our core. Uh, in it priors, right? We are projecting these things on everything around us. Like if you if you paint uh, a smiley on a rock, the rock becomes happy in our eyes. And because we have this uh, uh, extreme bias that permeates everything, everything we see around us, it's actually pretty easy to trick people. Like I just Eliza disagree with that. I just disagree. I so totally disagree with that. You brilliantly put. There's a huge 
it, it's a, the anthropomorphization that we naturally do, the agentness of that word. Is that a real word? But it's, no, it's not a real word. I, I like it. But it's a let's good word. It's, it's a useful word. It's a useful word. Let's make it real. It's a huge help. But I still think it's really difficult to convince. Uh, if you do like the Alexa Prize formulation, where you know you talk for an hour, like there's formulations of the test you can create where it's very difficult. So I like I like the Alexa Prize better because it's more pragmatic, it's more practical. Right. It's actually incentivizing developers to create something that's useful yeah. as, uh, as, as a, a, a human uh, machine interface. Uh, so that's slightly better than just the imitation. So I like it. Your, your, um, your idea is like a test which hopefully help us in creating intelligent systems as a result. Like if you yes. create a system that passes it, it'll be useful for creating further intelligent systems. Yes, at least. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm j just to kind of comment. I, I, I'm a little bit surprised how little inspiration people draw from the Turing test today. You know, the the media and the popular press might write about it every once in a while. The philosophers might talk about it, but like most engineers are not really inspired by it. And I know, I know, you don't like the Turing test. But uh, we'll have this argument another time. <laughs> you know, I, 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 there's I, something inspiring it, about it. I think that should... as as a, as a philosophical device in a philosophical discussion, I think there is something very interesting about it. I don't think it is practical. in practical terms. I don't think it's it's conducive to to progress. And one of the reasons why is that you know I think being very human-like, being indistinguishable from a human, is actually the very last step in the creation of machine intelligence. That the first AIs that will show strong uh, generalization uh, uh, in, uh, in, uh, uh, that, that will actually uh, implement human-like broad cognitive abilities, they will not actually be able to look anything uh, like humans. Human-likeness is the very last step in that process. And so a good test is a test that points you towards the first step uh, on the ladder, not towards the top of the ladder, right? Okay, so to push back on that, so I guess I, I usually agree with you on most things. I remember you, I think at some point, tweeting something about the Turing test not being being counterproductive or something like that. And I think a lot of very smart people agree with that. I, uh, at, uh, a uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> computation speaking, not very smart person, uh, disagree with that because I think there's some magic to the interactivity interactivity with other humans. So to push uh, to play devil's advocate on your statement, it's possible that in order to demonstrate the the generalization abilities of a system, you have to show your ability in conversation, show your ability to adjust, adapt to the conversation mm -hmm. through not just like as a standalone system but through the process of like the interaction, like game theoretic, where the, you're, you really are changing the environment by your actions. So in the arc challenge, for example, you're an observer. You can't, you can't scare the test into, uh, into changing. You can't talk to the test. You can't play with it. So there's some aspect of that interactivity that becomes highly subjective, but it feels like it could be conducive to uh, yeah, generalizing. I think you, you make a great point. The interactivity is a very good setting to force a system to show adaptation, to show generalization. Uh, uh, that, that said, you at the same time, uh, it's not something very scalable because right. you rely on human judges. It's That's not something reliable because the human judges may not may not. So be. you don't like human judges. I mean, Basically, it's... yes. And I think so. I, I, I love the idea of interactivity. Um, I initially wanted an arc test uh, that had some amount of interactivity where your score on a task would not be one or zero, if you can solve it or not, but would be the number um, of attempts uh, that you can make before you hit the right solution, which means that now you can start applying the scientific method as you solve arc tasks, that you can start formulating hypotheses and 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 probing the system to see whether the the hypothesis, uh, the observation, will match the hypothesis or not. It would so, be amazing if you could also, even higher level than that, measure the quality of your attempts, <laughs> which of course is impossible. But again, that gets subjective. Yes, like how good was your thinking? Like, it's the yeah, how efficient was. So one one thing that's interesting about this notion of 
scoring you as how many attempts you need is that you can start producing tasks that are way more ambiguous, right? Right. Because exactly. so you can... with the pro with the with the different attempts, you can actually probe that ambiguity, right? Right. So that's in a sense which yeah, so it's how good can you uh, adapt to the uncertainty and. Uh, reduce the uncertainty. Yes, it's half fast. With is the efficiency with which you reduce uncertainty in in program space exactly. Yeah. Very difficult to come up with that kind of test, though. Yeah, so uh, I would love to be able to create something like this in practice. Uh, it would be it would be very very difficult. But yes, but uh, I mean, what you're doing, what you've done with the Arc Challenge is is uh, brilliant. I'm also not. I'm surprised that it's not more popular, but I think it's picking up. It like has a, its niche. It has its niche. Yeah. yeah.